I think one thing that my dad has taught me about my heavenly dad is the access. Um, you know, looking at my own dad and being like in work and the positions that you have or, you know, how people look up to you or, you know, and then you come home and it's like, I don't know you as that person. I just know you as dad. Um, and, and, and looking at my heavenly father who is, who is incredible and just beyond all comprehension of amazing, right? Like the glory that he carries and, and who am I, right? Like, I'm just like this, I feel like it's, I'm just this little person who's coming and like should cower in front of him, right? But it's like, no, 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 like, come on in. I want to talk to you. I want to hear you. And I think my dad taught me that, right? Like there's, it doesn't matter what time it is. If it's the middle of the night, you can wake me up. Like that there's just this access that we have as his kids, right? And um, it's just such a cool thing to be able to, to know that that's who our God is, right? Is one who's like, no, you're not small. Like you're really important. And um, I will stop all these things just so that I can spend time with you and see you and come alongside. And I think, yeah, that's one really significant thing that my dad taught me. So my dad is um, actually my stepdad that raised me. I was two when um, he and my mother met and they married when I was three. And, you know, I always say he's really the only dad that I've ever really known. Um, and that has helped me to understand adoption into God's family because of the adoption that I've had in, um, to my dad and just feel really grateful that um, I have that physical example of how the father chooses us. I, I would say, I mean, you brought up that I'm a third generation uh, uh, Roland. And I think like thinking about that, um, you know, I, one of the things that uh, my dad told his father, uh, who he just passed in, in March, one of the things that he told him, uh, they didn't have a good relationship when he was growing up, but as he became an adult, they started to have a relationship. Um, one of the things that he told his father was, and then he said it again at the funeral, was that he was always looking to live up to the name that his father gave him. And so I do that too. You know, my dad is, I mean, he's achieved a lot. He's, you know, he's a, he's a godly man. He's, you know, he introduced me uh, to God, you know, prayed for me, you know, all my life, still praying for me. Um, but I always look, I, I try to live up to that name, like that he gave me. And I want to live in such a way that my son can look and say, man, I got, I have to live up to my father's name. And I feel like, that makes me think about like just being a believer, you know, to live up to the name, to live up to what Christ has done, to live up to that, to the example that he's done and, you know, the salvation that he's given, that he's given me just to be able to, to live in such a way that, it, you know, that it honors that, so. Yeah, I would say for me, uh, my dad um, was, that, was that dad that uh, growing up, my cousins, my friends, they didn't want to be around him as much because he was, it was by the book, right? It was rules in place and we had to follow them. Um, so obviously I was like that as well, not realizing that he was pointing me in the right direction. So um, I would say as I got older, um, I obviously realized what he was doing and taking a lot of things um, that I learned from him and, and applied them with, uh, with my kids or with our kids. and. Um, that's just been a blessing for me just to kind of look back and see some of the things that I thought, oh, he's just being tough on me. He's not being reasonable. And now I see like, oh, no, he was, he was helping me stay on the right track um, when I could have been doing other things, so. I guess I just, I love my father-in-law and I'm, I'm often really, really grateful that Calvin had a strong father figure because it makes him a really good husband. And I think that if he hadn't had a tough dad who, you know, was always holding him to high standards, I think that that would be, he'd be a very different man um, as far as, you know, just taking responsibility for our home. So 
I just praise God for his dad. And his dad is a man of God who is very quick to give praise to God and say, it, you know, it's God's grace that um, that gets him through. Being a being a, a dad, uh, a husband, a father, it it's a lot. And so, you know, for those dads who pour so much into their work, it's sometimes it's that stress of, okay, well, I've got to provide and the bills have to be paid or, you know, I just, so I think the thing that was awesome that I saw in our in our family is that my mom just stepped up to be the cheerleader and and cheer him on and teach us how to do the same. And and then I was I, I've been able to try to do that with my own husband because it is a lot of responsibility and the world tells you it's something different than what you know it's supposed to be. Especially in a society that has um kind of glorified this idea of doofus dads, right? Where dads are just kind of in the house. They may or may not be important to the house. Moms are portrayed as very important, um, but dads, you know, if you watch a lot of sitcoms as I do, you'll see dads being portrayed more and more as not necessary, as silly or you know, um, not someone that you necessarily can depend on, just kind of happen to be there. And we know that that is the opposite. We really do celebrate fathers who are there, you know. You guys, you're there. That's why you're here. You know, somebody saw you and said, hey, we got to get him in on this conversation.